Uh, hi everyone, I am Jesper Aquist. I am a PhD student at Lund Univers University in Sweden. And today I want to tell you about uh, XtenJ. So what is XtenJ? Well, it's an extensible Java compiler. And it's a research compiler that was developed at my university. The first version was developed by Torbjörn Ekman. And I made the Java 7 extension and the Java 8 support was added by a master's student named Erik Hogeman. And one interesting thing is that each Java version we add as an extension upon the previous Java version. The compiler is open source and I am the current maintainer. So what are the goals of this compiler? Well, we want to try to make it as easy as possible to add extensions to the compiler. Extensions, uh, adding new analysis, new language constructs like operators or new semantics, and metrics tools. Currently, this compiler is being used for research projects, for experimenting with new Java language features, and for our course projects in our compilers course. So there's an optional course project where students spend around three weeks with uh, some compiler uh, topic and they can choose to try to make an extension for XtenJ. So I want to show you a few extensions that have been made to show what's possible to do with uh, XtenJ. So one extension that a student uh, group made for the course project was to add static analysis checks and they added several static analysis, but one that I can show that's very simple and I can show the full implementation is this uh, string equality check. So what this does is it checks if you use the equals operator to compare two string, op uh, two string objects. And in Java, if you know Java, you probably know that, that this is bad because it compares the object references and that not the string contents. So what you want to use instead is the equals method. So uh, this is the full implementation of this static analysis. And it's written in a language called Justad. And it's generated into Java code. So uh, Justad is a meta compiler system which uh, generates your compiler for you. And the first, the first thing you see is a a uh, line that says that an error message should be added to the EQ expr, that's the equals operator, if it matches some condition. And the condition is specified by a so-called attribute, which is uh, this, uh, the next part below. So the attribute bad string EQ is true only when the left and right hand side of uh, an equals expression have type string. And we can map this to the source code we saw before. And the left and right hand side of uh, EQ expert are the left and right hand side of the EQ, the equality operator. So another uh, extension by a student group is uh, they, they had a more ambitious project. They wanted to add the spread operator to Java. So the spread operator is in, for example, Groovy. Uh, it's very useful for collecting, say, the names of all people if you have a collection of people. So you can use the spread operator to collect members of objects or call uh, some method on a collection of objects. And this project was quite ambitious and they, they, they didn't get so far, but you can see this code I'm showing here has a new operator, so they had to add new parsing to the compiler to support this. And they added static analysis, so, so this uh, small example goes through the compiler they made. Another extension is one that I made, and I made this in collaboration with a German professor for a paper that we wrote about multiplicities in Java. So the idea of multiplicities is that it should be very easy to program with multitudes of objects. And it should be very simil similar to how you program with just one object at a time. So 
the code here is working compilable code where the any annotation tells the compiler that the people object can contain multiple persons. And the, the concatenation operator, normally it only operates on primitive types and strings, but here you use it to add objects to a collection. And then uh, you can call a method on all objects in this collection by just calling it as if it was a single object. So I can demonstrate this uh, working here. Uh, so I have my compiler and I compile this test file which contains exactly the code you saw in the slide. And then I can run the code to see that it prints out what I expected. So both Alice and Bob uh, print out that they are working. And just for fun, I can, I can add a new person there into the collection, rebuild, and then run it again. And now we see that there is a third person who uh, this work method is called on. So uh, hopefully this uh, shows how uh, you can do some really interesting extensions with this system, but how does it work? So to show that, I want to show you how the internals of the compiler look. And in general, a compiler takes source code and it uh, parses it into an abstract syntax tree. And then it does some work on that abstract syntax tree and either it generates an executable, hopefully, and unfortunately, in some cases, you get errors. Um, the work the compiler does is mainly transformations and analysis in the abstract syntax tree. So the analysis check if there are errors that need to be reported, and then it's transformed into an intermediate representation or to bytecode. So uh, unfortunately, this slide seems to be a little bit cropped here, but uh, on the left-hand side, we have how, how is a, uh, a regular compiler structured? Well, it's usually divided into passes. So you, uh, you run a series of passes which are implemented as visitors, where each visitor walks over the whole abstract syntax tree and does some computation and transformation to the tree. And it writes information out to a shared data structure. And then the next pass reads data from that data structure and does its own work. So in the traditional compiler construction, there is a dependency on the order of passes. So if you want to add a new pass, you have to insert at the, uh, it in the right spot. And it also affects this, the share shared data that other passes use. So you have to be careful that you may, your changes don't uh, screw up the work for uh, subsequent passes. So in contrast to this, in XtenJ, we use something called attribute grammars. So we declare so-called attributes on the AST nodes. Attributes are essentially equations that define some property of the node. For example, you can have a type attribute which gives you the, the type of the node if it's something that could have a type. Uh, and you can have a declaration attribute which will find the declaration. For example, let's say you have a variable axis and you want to know where it uh, where it is declared, so you use the decl attribute to find that. And these attributes uh, are used to generate errors and uh, bytecode, executable code, and we do this uh, by having top-level attributes on the program node. So the, the root of the tree here is, uh, represents the whole program, and you just evaluate the errors attribute to check if there are any errors in the program. And one nice advantage of using attributes is that the execution is automatically scheduled. So you don't have to think about the order dependence which you have in uh, the traditional compiler with passes. And also, there is no shared data structure. The attributes themselves represent the, the data that's computed. Another advantage is that attributes favor small-scale compu computations. So with the uh, visitors in, uh, in your uh, traditional compiler, 
you tend to make large computations because you walk over the whole tree, you don't want to do that very many times, so it's favorable to, to uh, combine many computations into one traversal. Uh, but in the attribute grammar case with attributes, we, we tend to write smaller computations, smaller logical units. And this means that it's, uh, it's better for decomposing into your extensions. So you could reuse the type attribute without having to run a whole pass. So I can show you, uh, to make this more concrete, I have a program here which visualizes the abstract syntax tree in extend j. So on the right hand side here is a Java program and on the, in the middle is the abstract syntax tree for the Java program. And I zoomed in onto the if statement in the middle here. And I can click on nodes and it will highlight the, the node in the program text. So I clicked on the if statement and it has highlighted the whole if statement. So I can go in here and look at, for example, the variable axis there. And I can, uh, on the left hand side is a list of all the attributes on this node. So I can go in and, for example, look up the, the name attribute. And I can click on that to evaluate it. So now it computed the name. Obviously, the name attribute is a very simple attribute because the, the, the name is just a literal in the source code. But uh, more advanced attributes like the type or the uh, declaration can be computed just by, by using this interface. And if we take the, the variable axis here, we want to figure out the declaration. I look up the declaration attribute again by filtering this list and now it points out and now I have to zoom out so I apologize the text is a little bit a little bit small here but I get this green arrow which points onto the actual declaration uh, of the variable so again uh, I deselected by mistake but now this arrow points to the declaration and I can click that declaration and see oh that it's that part of the source code. So uh, this tool is of course useful and uh, useful for exploring what you can compute in the compiler to see what attributes you could use for your extension. Because that's one large part of, of making an extension is uh, having to find these attributes. And I could also show you how to make a very simple extension. And for this uh, we have a very small base project that you can use to uh, start making an extension with. And this is just a uh, project that doesn't do anything, it just runs static analysis on a, a Java file. And if I, I run the executable, the jar file, I already built this and it says my input file contain no errors. And the input file here contain, contains uh, the the if statement we saw previously with the food equals beer uh, test. So uh, I would like to add the string equality check that I discussed previously. So how can we do that? Well, we have to add some attributes. And I can go in here into an aspect file that I prepared and uncomment my attributes. And this is essentially uh, the same code that we saw previously. I uncomment it and then I rebuild the compiler. And now when it's building, you can see that it's generating Java. And this is the just add system which takes your attribute specifications, the code above, and it uh, generates Java code. And then that Java code has to be compiled to uh, generate the executable for the compiler. So now we have compiled everything and I run it on the input file again. And now it says that we should replace an equals operator here. So you can see that it has detected our problem and we can update it here and run it again. Now it should contain no errors. So that's a very quick demonstration of how to make an extension in the system. And 
it's, uh, we, we try to make it very easy to get started with, and our students who use this, they have about three weeks to, to uh, learn the system. They haven't had any previous experience except having uh, been introduced to the concept of attribute grammars. And they, uh, they managed to, to make useful extensions in this time. So uh, that was all I wanted to show you. And uh, if you want to find out more, you can go, you can head over to extendj.org where we have documentation about it and how to get started and tutorials and stuff like that. And if you want to learn more about uh, attribute grammars and uh, the JustAd system, we have a homepage for that as well. So thank you so much for listening. Do we have any questions? Yeah? Uh, it can be a combination. That's a good question. And uh, we can you can analyze control flow and data flow. Can you repeat so the yes, uh, the question was if you can analyze control flow graphs or data flow in XtNJ. And the answer is that you can build extensions for that and then use those extensions. And we have extensions for control flow and data flow analysis already. Uh, the data flow analysis, I think, is a little bit outdate li a little outdated for, for the current vers version of XtNJ. But uh, there are two control flow uh, extensions, one that I I made uh, during an internship at Google, which analyzes uh, only if you can select, uh, I'm only interested in, for example, method calls. And then you can get a control flow graph which contains only the control flow relevant to method calls. And uh, I think the links to those extensions should be at extendj.org. But uh, yeah, uh, there, there are extensions for that. So. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.